stupid fish take the bait! Space aliens. Don't eat me. I have a wife and kids. Eat them. Silence. I suppose you want to probe me. Well, let as well get it over with. Stop. This is a mission of conquest. Take us to your leader. Um, there's this election next week, so after that it might not be him anymore. Hmm. An election that complicates matters. Hell, well, night, everybody. Night, Senator. Good luck next week. What? Oh. What's happening? Is it noon already? Hey. Well, thanks for taking care of it all for me. Hey! <laughs> Commence bio-duplication. Oh, my God. Lyndon LaRouche was right. What? Are you still here? I'm afraid we'll have to dispose of you. Oh, no. What are you trying me with? Run. So no one will believe your story. Commence bio-duplication. Oh, my God, Lyndon LaRouche was right. What? I cannot believe that we take the position that there is uh, nothing that can stop terrorism and that all we can do is passively to endure it. As the U.S. raid sparks worldwide furor, some of the angriest denunciations come from the U.N., among them, the Soviet Union. We will never persuade us to agree to the blatant use of a force by a mighty power against a small state. This is a violation of the U.N. Charter, and that's that. Lyndon LaRouche has a mission to become president of the United States. He'll explain why this morning. Democrats, uh, want to save the United States and save civilization? You want to be president? I, I don't particularly want to. I think I've got to be. Here are two of the controversial statements of political extremist Lyndon LaRouche. The Queen of England is a drug dealer. Henry Kissinger is an agent of influence for the Soviet Union. Lyndon LaRouche has been called many things, including an eccentric. But two of his supporters are now on the statewide Democratic Party ticket in the state of Illinois. This hour, Lyndon LaRouche talks about his quest for mainstream support. That's coming right up. Stay with us as Night Watch continues. Stand for everything. Suddenly last month, the name Lyndon LaRouche became a much more prominent name in American politics. His supporters surprised Democratic Party regulars and took two top spots in the Illinois primary. Since then, Democratic leaders around the country have been closely watching other LaRouche followers. LaRouche himself has run for president three times during the 20-year history of his movement. Some say his policies defy description in conventional political terms, and he has attracted only a small percentage of the vote in national elections. Joining us now, Lyndon LaRouche. Thank you for coming in. Good to be here. Uh, what is the LaRouche movement? Well, it's, uh, it's something which occurred not by intent, but the way things grow. Uh, we, we've just been doing things, some friends of I, mine and our, uh, and myself, and it grows into things. I'm essentially an economist uh, with a philosophical view. Uh, we live in a world of crisis. I respond to events, my friends respond to events, we act, we react, uh, generally according to our economic uh, perception of, uh, and to our philosophical perception. Do you have an agenda? Well, yes and no. Uh, my fundamental agenda is uh, moral. That is, we, uh, we have a moral tradition which we can identify best with the American Revolution and before that, the Golden Renaissance centered in Italy in the 15th century. We are losing that over the past hundred years in particular. It's been eroding fairly rapidly. Sure, we're, we make a lot of mistakes. Our policies are wrong. We're in economic misery. We're at the edge. Our policies mean American policies? The United States policies, other policies are wrong. Western civilization's policies are going wrong in many areas. But the problem lies not with the policies as such, even though they're wrong and they're bad and many of them are catastrophic. The problem lies with the decision-making process, the lack of the right moral factor in the decision-making process. For example, 
In our government, we've had a trend in policies over 20 years, uh, and tw almost uh, 25 years on defense policy, always in the wrong direction. But this same policy has gone through several mutations under successive presidents who had strong differences with each other. And the important thing is not the particulars of the policy, but what moral yardsticks are being used to decide what is good and what is bad. And the problem is that we've become pessimistic. We used to be optimistic, and now we've become a pessimistic people. And you, and, you and I sat here a few minutes before we started taping talking about the events in Libya, the attack on Libya. When you talk about SDI, when you talk about a lot of other issues, you seem like many other guests that are on this broadcast, reasonable, interesting, informed, uh, with opinions. But that's not the impression that so many Americans who have of you, who write about you, they have an impression of a man who has started this movement 20 years ago as a Marxist, then became a social Trotskyite, perhaps, then part of a, a socialist labor party, mm. and then now is a Democrat who wants to run the presidency. Ooh. They know you because of all these controversial views about the Queen of England being involved mm. in drugs, about Henry Kissinger being a tool of the Soviets, Walter Mondale. Why do you say those things? Well, first of all, in the, percep the perception game, there's a section of the liberal news media which has been publishing, which amounts to just plain outright lies, and taking in each other's lies and republishing them. This is quite in contrast to the work we actually do. Uh, I, I'm one of the most voluminous writers of this century. And there is no excuse for anybody uh, to say, well, we, this is all we could find out. Because every view I've expressed has been expressed in, at great length and with great substantiation. So when someone comes out with a one-liner, which is a misrepresentation of what we're saying, or at least a distortion, which amounts to misrepresentation, then that's pretty willful. So the liberal news media's perception and reality are two different things. The so-called kookiness comes from the perception which the news media has been telling itself to have, not from reality. All right, that's a good, good opening for me to have you here and mm -hmm. talk about some of those things. Let's mm -hmm. deal with those perceptions first. Henry Kissinger. Henry Kissinger is an agent of Soviet influence. In the classical historians and politicians, political scientists definition of agent of influence, the term Asian of influence was first used by William Pitt the Younger when he was prime minister, referring to some potentate down in, in Madagascar who he described as an agent of, influ of British influence. That is not an outright agent of the British crown, not a paid agent of the British crown, but someone under British influence whose policies were shaped by, in the interests of British influence. What possible evidence do you have that he is an Sov agent of Soviet influence? Because there is no... American of stature who believes that. Oh, no, that's not true. Name one. I would say that a good deal of the old crowd of the CIA and the Pentagon and so forth, senior people... Well, name one. Well, I wouldn't want to name them, but I've talked... Then we get into problems. No, you don't get into problems at all. Uh, this, you had the Angleton uh, coverage of Kissinger years ago. Angleton has never said uh, Angleton, that Kissinger is an agent Angleton of Soviet influence. Angleton is a man who keeps little handwritten notes on very small writing in the palm mm. of his hand. And that what Angleton thinks, you don't find out from Angleton unless you're one of his intimates. You find out from what his friends say, because he tells them what to say instead of saying it himself. The man is a, is a very interesting spider. He's yeah. one of the more interesting, uh, eccentric, but e interesting characters of our time. Your support, come back to Angleton, mm -hmm. your supporters have also criticized um, the private life of Mr. Kissinger. No, it is fairly. No, and, no, and clearly not unfairly wrong. at all. Of course, among in liberals, airports and running no, after. No, 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 no. This was totally misrepresented. This is a clear case of fraud by the news media. What happened, in point of fact, is a representative of a publication encountered Mr. Kissinger with his wife and with a marshal who was a security guard in the Newark airport. Walked up to him and said, "Dr. Kissinger, can I ask you two questions?" This is a private conversation between a journalist and Dr. Kissinger with his wife and the guard present. He said yes. She asked him a question which pertained to this Westmoreland business which was breaking at that time, which, in which he'd been named. Uh, he responded to that question. Then she said, Dr. Kissinger, I also want to ask you about this story about little boys at the Carlisle Hotel. In that point, Dr. Kissinger had no chance to answer. His wife, who is a woman of choleric disposition, attempted to strangle the woman. 
and the woman was saved from being assassinated by the guard who pulled Nancy Kissinger off the woman. That was acquitted later of that. Well, she was, the judge said, not acquitted, the judge said uh, that she, the case should be dismissed because her behavior, in the judge's words, was almost human. And wouldn't you expect your wife to do the same thing if someone came up no, to you and said a, the same thing to you in an I've airport? Been, I've been asked terrible things, which were absolutely fraudulent by journalists. About but sexual preference? There are all kinds of things. I've been told, I, aren't you a Nazi? Aren't you an anti-Semite? Those are terrible lies, even as questions. But I generally respond to them unless they become repeated too tiresomely. Dr. Kissinger, I also want to ask you about this story about little boys at the Carlisle Hotel. In that point, Dr. Kissinger had no chance to answer. His wife, who is a woman of choleric disposition, attempted to strangle the woman. said, not acquitted, the judge said uh, that she, the case should be dismissed because her behavior, in the judge's words, was almost human. 